Welcome to Worship with Wessa. It is May the 14th, 2021. It is the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent. We gather. See my servant, says the God of hope, wounded and scarred, broken and suffering. Many shall see and be astonished, nations startled and shocked, their leaders staring and speechless. He was wounded to bring wholeness. Come, my servant, says the God of hope, wounded and scarred, broken and suffering. Our opening song of prayer.
epistle reading, Hebrews 13, 12 to 16. Jesus also suffered outside the city gate. He suffered to make the people holy by spilling his own blood. So let us go to him outside the camp. Let us be willing to suffer the shame he suffered. Here we do not have a city that lasts, but we are looking for the city that is going to come. Let us never stop offering to God our praise through Jesus. Let us talk openly about our faith in him. Then our words will be like an offering to God. Don't forget to do good. Don't forget to share with others. God is pleased with those kinds of offerings. The Gospel reading, Matthew 14, 13 and 14. Jesus heard what had happened to John. He wanted to be alone. So he went in a boat to a quiet place. The crowds heard about this. They followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus came ashore, he saw a large crowd. He felt deep concern for them. He healed their sick people. The word of God for the people of God. Strips so we might dread.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sacrifice is not the most popular topic or concept to speak about or to advocate for. And yet, for the past 12 months, yes, it's been a year, almost everyone I know has made sacrifices of some kind, has had to adapt, let go, move on, However, whatever it is that you've had to do, they can be summed up in the word sacrifice. You know what those are. Everyone has made sacrifices. But it was a common practice in the Old and New Testaments. The biblical, the biblical record has countless examples of sacrifice. Sacrifices are so prevalent in biblical stories, one might be moved to ask, does God demand we give up things? Does God expect us to choose difficult, sacrificial paths as a matter of faith? Let's look at Isaiah chapter 53. And the prophet's well-known description of the suffering servant. Isaiah foretold in that chapter hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. He prophesied a type of Messiah who was not the strong and powerful leader which Jesus' contemporaries were expecting of a Messiah. Sometimes the text was thought to represent the nation of Israel and its suffering. Later, New Testament writers understood it to be about Jesus and his suffering and his empathy for those who were suffering. Last week, I talked about how Jesus meets us in our differing states of suffering. I talked about Martha and Mary and the suffering they were going through with the loss of their brother Lazarus. Jesus responded to their suffering in different ways, depending on what it was that, that they needed to hear. I also talked about the suffering of Moses, his personal suffering, living in exile as a fugitive, but also the suffering of his people back in Egypt. Yet we see in Isaiah 53, Jesus does more than just provide a shoulder for us to cry on. Jesus' own journey was one of suffering, was one of sorrow. As he traveled through the wilderness of his world, a journey which ultimately took him to the very center of wilderness, the cross. Isaiah prophesied, like a root in dry ground, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We know this man of sorrows wept at Lazarus's tomb. We know that he wept over the fate of Jerusalem. And we know he mourned his cousin's death. In Matthew 14, we hear the horrible story of John being beheaded. And when Jesus hears this news about his cousin, he chooses to go into the desert, into the wilderness to mourn. God knows intimately the human experience of grief and pain. It's part of who Jesus is. It's, it's part of his story. It's part of his life and his death. And God knows all of it. Isaiah foretold that the Messiah would not only know 
our sorrow, he would not only know his own sorrow, but that, that the Messiah who was to come would carry the full weight of our suffering and sin. The fourth verse of Isaiah 53. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Whatever wilderness you and I are struggling with, Jesus has borne the pain of that on the cross. I, I don't say this to make you feel guilty for still feeling like you're in the wilderness. I understand that feeling. I have had that feeling. And it's a very real feeling. But you're not bearing that on your own. The, the pain of that wilderness is something that Jesus also experienced and wants to help you with that. In the New Testament, the book of Hebrews is a, is a good place to go to, to help us understand how Jesus continues and concludes the story in Isaiah 53. In chapter 10 of Hebrews, the writer describes how Jesus is the one final sacrifice for all sin, and that, by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made whole. The sacrifices that we make today, that, that you and I have made this past year, or longer than that, the sacrifices that we make now are not done to earn God's love. But the writer of Hebrews does say that there are sacrifices that we can make. We are called to make sacrifices of praise and sacrifices of doing good and sacrifices of sharing, of sharing with other people. Verses 12 to 6. Let us, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise and do good and share with others for with such sacrifices God is pleased seeing what Jesus was willing to sacrifice for us we are empowered to bring our praise and our service we can worship God with our with our lips and prayers we, we, can, we can offer and worship with God. Uh, our, our, we can offer our generosity and our compassion towards other people. Amen. And so be it. I, I have shared, certainly when I've been in touch with people, uh, mostly online, in Zoom coffee times or in meetings, I've shared how much I am missing the community of Wesley. And some of it is, some of it's the obvious things that I'm missing, certainly the fellowship, our coffee hours and all the barbecues that we had, would have had last summer, um, all the fellowship events organized by the hospitality committee. And, 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 and the fundraisings that, that we do, that are both fun and fundraising. I miss our worship time, especially. I, I miss the opportunity to sing with people. I, I miss the conversations I have with uh, the children, the younger members of the congregation. One of the things that I, I've come to realize I, 
I really miss is, is the opportunity to offer a prayer at the time of offering. Westside has a unique tradition. It's, it's a little different from most Presbyterian and, and many uh, Reformed churches. Uh, in many churches, they take up the offering, it's brought to the front, and the presiding minister or priest offers a prayer of, of dedication or an offertory prayer at that time, after the offering has been received. In, in Westside, we've always done the prayer of dedication, the prayer uh, of offering. We've done it before we've taken up the offering. I think it says something that we're thankful for everything that we receive and we're thankful for the opportunity to share. That's the prayer I think I've missed most in the last number of months. I'm going to offer a prayer of thanksgiving or a prayer of giving thanks uh, at, at this service. Let us pray. God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace, we thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the life-giving love of family and friends. We thank you for the faith communities to which we belong. We thank you for our neighbors, for our co-workers. We thank you for the multitude of ways that the members and adherents and constituents of Westside have continued their generosity. In the face of uncertainty, in the midst of dilemma, with unease and unknowns part of every day, we thank you for the multitude of ways that the members, adherents, and constituents of Westside continue to serve others in your name. God of all goodness, we give thanks for your presence among us as we gather apart and your promise to be with us now and always. Amen. And now our closing song. Lord, you hear the cry of the widow weeping. Lord, you hear the cry of the child ill-treated. Lord, you hear the cry of the depressed one sinking. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have the proud ones laughing. Lord, you hear the sound of the childless hoping. Lord, you hear the sound of those in debt and struggling. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, you hear the sound of the addict praying. 
the great of nations, Lord, you hear the sound of the martyrs praying, Lord, have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us. Break the heavens, Lord, who said, for are not forgotten, let your justice roar in mighty waves across the earth. Come and whisper peace, O oh God of generous compassion. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, you hear the sound of your kingdom coming, resurrection day for creation groaning, mercy I receive, pouring out on me, have mercy on us, Lord, have Thank you, Cheryl. We are sent out. See, my servant, says the God of hope, wounded and scarred, broken and suffering. Many shall see him and be astonished, nations startled and shocked, their leaders staring and speechless. He was wounded to bring wholeness. We are sent into a world which is battered and bruised, its people hungry and without hope. We will walk with these people and we will bring wholeness. Let us pray. God of hope, you sent Jesus wounded and scarred and broken to walk with us. Send us now your wounded and scarred and broken church, to bring wholeness, compassion, grace, peace, and hope. In his name, amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.